Sam Altman said, get good at asking people to try your product and sell them. Get good at it? Really? That's, that's, that's in the playbook. So the effort and the focus of lecture for number four, CS 183S, is to, to play Little League, to get going, to start up your sales, selling, and promotion experience. And when you hear a bit of advice from a legendary VC that's like, no, just get good at using, get good at people asking people to use product, get good at asking for money. There are a series of incredibly small little things that we can do to build confidence, whereas right now, maybe not a whole lot of us have a ton of confidence to do this. That's what this lecture's meant to do. CS183S Lecture 4, dealing with the startup and practicing selling. What happens is once we attempt selling and sales, people are gonna come up with objections. And these objections are gonna put us on our butt where the majority of humans cannot sell, refuse to try to sell. Why? Because they hear an objection and they literally fold and crumble. That's normal, that's rejection, that's failure and pain. And those things are painful. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to sell something that we did not code. We're gonna sell something that intrinsically is not our own making and our own creation. And thus, we won't take it as personally. It'll still be personal, but it won't be deathly personal where we're just gonna fold and crumble into a ball. This is a bit that's relatively counterintuitive, which is you wanna give older people who are buying from us one throat to choke. One throat to choke. Uh, meaning if something goes wrong or if they need customer service, they need to be able to find you. And that's the majority of, of buyers' uh, fear is that after they buy something, they're going to have buyer's remorse. After they buy something, they're going to lose customer support. In fact, Justin Kahn tweeted, uh, always take your beating. And what he means by that is, is you want to be around and listen for when your buyer is telling you things that are emotionally charged because he's got money in his own career on the line. So he says, always take your beating. Hopefully that uh, explains some of the things that you're gonna be coming up to face with. If you're lucky and super persistent, old people will take a chance on you. By old people, it's anybody over 25 who's in an executive position who's able to buy product from you. So they might take a chance on you, but you wanna have uh, an identity that people can find. You wanna properly enunciate your name. You want to, my name is Larry Chang, C-H-I-A-N-G. So that way they have one throat to choke, one identity to search and Google, and they might, I mean, your probability for closing is still low, but your probability increases ever so slightly. And that's what your goal is to practice so that way when you actually are selling and promoting your own thing, your probability is phenomenally high. Paragraph 26 of that TechCrunch article, how I started and sold a $350 million company without knowing anything about software. Paragraph 26 matters because an executive took a chance on the writer. The writer was Asian, so maybe the person extrapolated over the telephone, which is how that deal got sold, the first deal of, of giving them one throat to choke. So that's paragraph 26. Scroll down, that's a great article to read. There's a bunch of nuggets, but paragraph 26 specifically goes towards the, the way to start up and drive a sale, which is giving the executive one throat to choke and thus the executive takes a chance on you. But, but the path to that was over 2,000 rejections. There's an entire industry of people that try to dodge uh, responsibilities, financial responsibilities, which is why NAPBS, National Association of Professional Bureau Screeners, uh, they're actually finding those throats to choke. And the reason that this is so important is that the ability for salespeople to execute after a sale is low. So the buyer is going to put you through a ton of hardship on the front side and see how persistent you are before money gets transferred because they wanna see how responsive you are. They wanna see if you're a real person. They wanna see if you have a real company. And that's what giving them one throat to choke 
giving them yourself a number uh, helps. One name, one identity, one searchable identity. This is how the general population thinks doing a startup is. You want to email help at startup.com or support at, no, it's craig at craigslist.org. That's how you email Craig the founder. The name of the business is the throat to choke. It's Craig and it's his list. So it's easy to find and that's the step that you as a small startup uh, have as an advantage. This is actually in a Paul Graham uh, post, which is uh, under uh, cockroaches. Cockroaches survive. So that's a great article to look up. So give them one name, one identity, and one searchable entity to find you. Lies. Buyers think that salespeople are lying. It doesn't matter if you're an engineering undergrad selling, they don't know that you're an engineer or an undergrad. You kind of want to hide the fact that you're an undergrad, but tell them that you're an engineer. And the reason that they have all this angst is they've been burned by salespeople before. So you want to try to give them nuggets of information and mentorship. And it starts by giving your full name and having a searchable identity. When you're cold calling or pitching, answer the question, is there a hint of something great? Is there a, a morsel of of something that's awesome that you're promoting. And that's why I came up with this particular hashtag that is on down below, which is how to do what Duck9 does without having to hire Duck9. The hashtag for all those initials right there in the red. So what you're doing with that is you are actually giving uh, value before you're extracting money. So you're trying to prime the pump of uh, of money and value before you get revenue. How to do what Duck9 does without having to hire Duck9 template. It's amazeballs. And it's hashtag HTDWD9DWOHTHD9. I had to actually read that because I know I don't recite it like EUTWM PPM. But the reason that's important is it's a slide share presentation that later on when you're actually selling your own product, you will be pitching. You will be allowing to be loaded up and searched for on SlideShare. So that's how to do what Duck9 does without having to hire Duck9. Don't use Duck9, use your startup, but have that as a bullet in the chamber for later on when you're doing your own thing. This is a great baby step. This is a great practice. This is just an awesome way to build your promotion muscle. You wanna do hashtag PU internship one U. Pop up internship one U. Hashtag PU internship one U. And what it is, is you will be promoting Uber. You will go to a hotel and you will print out on a card and you will actually help people slam Uber into the phone. Do you know that old people don't know where the app store is? I mean, that's the reason that there's a cab line in a lot of nice hotels is, is that. And you can talk to the bell captain too. Hey, I've got a bunch of uh, $15 cards. Print out a card and walk people through it. Congratulations, this will be your first sale because you will absolutely sell some older person who has a phone, find the app store and download Uber. So that's what a Collison Brothers install is, is jacking a laptop, not stealing it, but just corralling the laptop and then loading on a program. That's what the Collison Brothers did. What you're gonna do is you are going to uh, get an older person with their smartphone and you will download Uber with your referral code. And you can print it out on a physical business card because I swear people, they need that. You know how I got a ton of my Uber referrals? I would text back my referral link and they would magically open the app store. I'm not even joking.